Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivier. I am a, I am a certified mindfulness meditation teacher. And on my channel, you will find tips on how to meditate and uh, mindfulness practices that you can uh, apply in your daily life. So today I want to share a little bit about a uh, Buddhist teaching that is very easy and simple to understand. And I will share how uh, this Buddhist teaching can help us understand our mind and how our mind can often create unnecessary suffering. I share some examples on how it uh, manifests in our daily life and uh, what we can do in our practice to alleviate uh, this um, unnecessary suffering. So let's get started. First of all, I wanted to touch on um, Buddhism because maybe for some of you, you have a different religion. Maybe some of you are atheist, and when and maybe when you hear the word Buddhism, uh, maybe you're afraid that it will clash with your faith, maybe with some ideas and so forth. To me, Buddhism is not much of a religion. It's more about uh, practice. So in Buddhism, we have some uh, teachings and what we do is we take those teachings and we apply them, uh, apply them in our daily life. And we see if, you know, it helps us live with more peace, with more understanding and compassion and so forth. If, it's, if it is beneficial for us. If it's not, then we don't apply them. Um, so yeah, Buddhism is more of a practice for me just like somebody would, who would practice yoga or who would practice tennis. And you will see in today's video what Buddhism is like, okay? So, uh, let's talk about this teaching. So basically, the teaching goes like this. Uh, one evening, the Buddha uh, asked his audience, if a man is struck by an arrow, will he hurt? And so the audience replied, yes, it will hurt. And so to that, the Buddha replied, if this person is struck by a second arrow, will it hurt? And so the audience replied, well, yeah, of course it will hurt and probably even more than the first arrow. And again, to that, the Buddha replied, in life, we cannot control everything. And so sometimes, we are struck by the first arrow. But the second arrow is what we do, is what our mind does with the first arrow. It ruminates, it feeds it, so it perpetuates the suffering. So the idea is that sometimes in life uh, we cannot escape the pains that come with being alive, maybe it is uh, losing somebody, it is losing something that is valuable to us, it is um, a fallout in a relationship or a breakup and so forth. And that creates pain, right? And then what the mind does, it often uh, ruminates on the pain to create a second arrow, to create additional unnecessary suffering for us. Does that make sense? Let me give you a very uh, simple example. Say that um, you are sleeping uh, at night and then um, your neighbor uh, comes home late, opens the garage door and wakes you up. Okay, so now you're awake. So maybe your mind will, will go like this. Oh, the neighbor, again, he comes late. Oh, tomorrow I will be tired and I won't be able to perform well during my presentation. So the first event, right, you are uh, awake because you heard some uh, noises outside. Then the first arrow, you know, maybe it is anger towards uh, the neighbor because you are afraid. And then the second arrow, uh, the third arrow would be, maybe you are anxious because you're afraid you'll be too tired to uh, do your uh, presentation the day after. And then the fourth arrow may be uh, you are fearful about it. And then the mind 
can go in circles and come back to the neighbor and then you be feel angry again and then anxious and then fearful and then stressed and then the mind can again go into a circle like this for you know hours and so forth so i hope that what i'm sharing makes sense to you and you've been able to uh, see that in uh, in your experience i remember this one time i had an argument with a uh, co-worker and during that conversation that with him i felt disrespected and then i became angry and uh, on my way home during my drive to go home i remember that i could not let go of this conversation and my mind was just racing i don't like this person i want to quit this team i want to quit this job uh, i am so angry i felt so disrespected and so forth like this for half an hour and what it does is that the mind feeds uh, feeds us thoughts that feeds our emotions and they feel this uh, that, that, that feel this state of feeling angry or feeling uh, anxious and so forth right we talked um, in a previous video about the nutrients right and nothing survives without food and so my anger you know kept being fed by my mind with these secondary arrows so how do we practice with this how do we practice with those secondary arrows so i'm sure that by now you understand that if we can avoid first if we can wake up at us shooting arrows to ourselves, say oh i am shooting those secondary arrows to myself i should stop that is the first step right to recognize what the mind is doing and that is what we practice in mindfulness meditation right we try not to block th thoughts but as they come we notice them and we let them go so when we do that we become aware of our thinking we become aware of our rumination and we train our mind to become aware when we are when we are getting lost in thought so that is one thing first is to recognize that we are lost in thought the second thing is as the thought come in the practice in the instructions that i gave before is to recognize and to not judge them the thought comes okay i let it go and when we do that while we try not to attach any judgment to our thoughts we start to develop a um, non-judgmental attention right when we have a thought and a judgment would be for example like oh i have a thought uh, during my meditation i am not good at meditation that is a judgment right so when we have a thought we try to just see the thought as a thought and to let it go just like a clouds moved into the sky and just flies away so when we do this we can see the arrows that we are shooting ourselves we can wake up from it and to simply let them go and in the end what we want to do is to come back to the original pain to attend it with our full attention to heal it to calm it and so forth does that make sense so we have our pain and our suffering and both are different the pain is what we cannot avoid in life that creates pain the suffering is what we do to ourselves. it's what our mind does to ourselves. so when we can when we start breathing in our meditation we can calm ourselves the thoughts start to settle down we can become aware that oh i was lost in thought i was lost in my rumination and so forth and little by little we can become calm enough so that we can notice the pain and the pain again is often um, or is man manifest in our body we talked about how our thoughts and emotion they manifest in our body if we had no sensations in our body we would not be able to uh, differentiate emotions right if we had no sensation when we are angry or we had no sensations in our body when we are happy or relaxed and so forth we wouldn't be able to tell our emotions so the practice is focus on your breathing 
little by little, calm your thoughts, calm your body, and then as you become, as your mind becomes clearer and your body becomes more settled, start noticing what is happening in your body. Maybe it is some anger, so secondary triggered anger or triggered fear or triggered uh, anxiety. So notice where in your body those sensations are and simply rest your attention there. Simply breathe with those sensations in your body. As simple as that. When we do that, we start relaxing the body. And the mind and the body, they are not two different uh, entities. They are connected with each other. With our mind, we can calm our body. But also with our body, we can calm our mind. And so when we do this, when we breathe with our sensations in our body, we can calm our mind. And as we uh, focus on the sensations in our body, our mind doesn't ruminate. We are not lost in thoughts. So we don't shoot ourselves to ourselves through these secondary arrows. Okay? So again, a lot of the practice is to come back to the body and in those videos I'm trying to explain why, uh, why it makes sense. When I first started meditation, uh, for me, you know, the most important thing was the mind. Um, I never really paid too much attention to my body. Um, and, uh, and with the practice, I realized that everything that's happening here, of my thoughts, my emotions, they all manifest in my body. And in the end, it is in my body that I can often um, reach a certain uh, state of peace, a certain state of uh, calmness. I have um, shared with you before this image where you have a glass of water and say you drop a spoon of salt in it. So the glass of water becomes very salty. But if you drop the same spoon of water in a lake, then the lake will not become salty because it is vast. And in the same way, when we are, when we are experiencing uh, this anger, you know, at f anger, anxiety, stress, fear, whatever. At first, you know, we are one with the emotion, the strong emotions. But we all have this ability with practice. We all have this ability to expand our awareness, to expand, to, to relax in such a way that we can feel um, spacious like the lake so that we will not feel overwhelmed by our emotions. And a lot of this feeling of expansion, feelings of uh, freedom and not feeling overwhelmed happens in the body by relaxing the body. And we do that by learning how to stay first with our emotion. And little by little, we start to relax with our emotion in, it, in us and then you know, we feel less and less and less and less overwhelmed and more uh, spacious and then more calm. And in the end, we can feel free. So, um, I hope that uh, um, you benefited from today's video. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this kind of uh, videos about uh, Buddhist uh, story or teachings. Uh, so I know uh, if, uh, 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 if I should make more, make more of them. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.